the California man who defended his home from two thugs who tried to rob him at gunpoint had his permit taken away. Let's check it out. For my next guest, it was like any other day. Work, the gym, returning home to his family, his wife and his five-month-old at home waiting for him. But as he was unlocking the door, two armed thugs shoved a gun in his face, tried to push their way through the door. Well, it was then that he did what any responsible concealed handgun permit holder would do. He decided to defend himself and his family, and a gunfight ensued. Now, everyone's safe, but those armed robbers are still on the loose. But even worse, perhaps, California... That's crazy right there. The guys are still on the loose. California has revoked that man's permit to carry. Again, the Golden State values strike again. Joining me now is Vince Ritchie, the man who defended his family, and Colian Noir, who's a Second Amendment advocate and attorney. Vince, let me start with you. Uh, tell us very briefly, very briefly, what happened. Well, thank you very much for having me here. I was coming home after a day of work in the gym, exactly like you said, and the thing I never thought was going to happen happened. I, I turned around to the surprise of two armed gunmen trying to get into my home. And the first thing I thought was my family, and there's no way I'm letting this happen. Crazy. So that part right there where he threw the thing, he said he had some tea, where he threw it at the guy. Now, Dan Bongino talks about this a lot. If you're being attacked and you have something in your hand, and you throw it at them, it's just a natural human reaction where they're going to, they're going to, you know, kind of, you know, jolt back, whatever. You're going to flinch. That's what I'm trying. You're trying to, you're going to flinch. So tip right there. And did you, do you carry regularly? I know you're the concealed carry uh, permit, but do you carry regularly? At, at the time, I wasn't really carrying because I never thought that I was going to have to use it. I never really thought, I never wanted to know that I thought that this was really going to happen. But after seeing this uptick in crime and homelessness and it just became commonplace that robberies were going to happen, I said, this is a responsibility I need to take. But it's not even a CCW matter because I was on my own property. I was walking in to the driveway and the entryway mm -hmm. of my house. So this petty attempt for them to strip me of my ability to carry outside of my house for something to happen on my property, it, it's just unexplainable. That doesn't make a lot of sense. The guy was on his property and defended himself. So why in the heck are they stripping him of his permit to carry outside of his home? It makes no sense. It's like they want to protect the criminals over the law-abiding citizens. Uh, I see what you're saying. Well, D.C. has uh, really strict concealed carry rules. You have to register one gun at a time. So is the gun you used registered as a concealed carry? Yes, the gun, a Glock 26, is registered as my one concealed carry, which I, at the time, like I said, I never really thought I was going to have to use it. And mm -hmm. I went about it the right way. I acquired it the right way. They granted me the right to carry. <laughs> now they're stripping me with the men at large that were looking for me and not giving me the ability to defend myself. And I hope well, Sheriff Coleon, what's the is reason? listening. What's the reason? What's I mean, I think it's pretty blatant what the reason is. The California has, has had a notorious reputation for being anti-gun and anti-anybody being able to carry a firearm unless you're part of the government somehow. So this aspect of them stripping him of, stripping him of his ability to carry a firearm, especially when we're talking about a situation that happened on his property, it just reeks of their hatred for citizens, law-abiding citizens for that matter, being able to carry firearms to protect themselves. Well... I have to say, Vince, you know, Newsom did propose that 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which would, you know, it, it, you know, preserve the language of the Second Amendment, but then add a whole bunch of new requirements and limitations to uh, gun ownership in the United States that, you know, they claim is, you know, very, very popular and people would want. But he's notoriously anti-gun rights. I don't care what he tries to say. Newsom is one of the worst in California. I think he's the second most you know poorly rated state as far as gun rights in the united states i think we'll even put up a a, a graphic that shows us the worst states for uh, gun rights in the united states but vince is there any doubt in your mind that uh, california at this point especially where you live it's a pro-criminal jurisdiction it's oh, not pro-gun rights people it's pro-criminal absolutely the sheriff's attempt now at coming after me is petty i think luna should step up and actually represent the citizens, the good giving back citizens that 
give back to the community and worst places for concealed carry dc wow california not surprising hawaii new jersey maryland you know these are all liberal run places for the most part but yeah they're all liberal run places California is very blue. Hawaii is very blue. New Jersey is very blue. D.C. is very blue. Maryland is blue. Not partake in the criminal activity that's happening because they're not getting arrested. They're not going after them. They're trying to restrict me. Yeah, the best states, Arizona, Utah, Alaska, Wyoming, and Florida. All of those have a, uh, well, except for Arizona now, have a Republican governor. Yeah, the best states we just put up, Arizona, Utah, Alaska, and so forth, Washington, D.C., California, Maryland, New Jersey, among the absolute worst. And, and by the way, I want to I bring this up. You know, Colian, in Florida, violent crime fell by 32% in 2022. Uh, and then compared to California, while California violent crime spiked 13% last year compared to 2019. So what would you say to Newsom, uh, Colian, about this approach to people like Vince. So California's crime spiked 13%. In Florida, you know, it's a pro-gun state, a law and order state. Ron DeSantis has done a great job over there uh, getting con uh, crime under control, at least bringing it down. And it, no, the numbers show that. Who are trying to defend his family on his own property. Given what the people of L.A. and L.A. County, especially San Francisco, are saying. Well, They're first of up. all, I think I think, first of all, Newsom needs to stop focusing on this issue from a position of control, because if you really if you're really talking about keeping people safe and saving people's lives, what you would do is you would empower people to be able to protect themselves since it's clearly been demonstrated that the police can't be there. When Vince was at home and the guys were jumping mm. over his wall, was Joe Biden there to help him? Was there a cop there to help him? Was Gavin Newsom there to help stop those criminals? No, they weren't. It was just Vince and those two guys. And yet and still, they create law after law after law, which makes it even harder for someone like Vince to be able to protect himself from two people with firearms. And then you mentioned the whole point about the 28th Amendment. The mere fact that he's trying to push this demonstrates how much he hates the Second Amendment, because if he understood the Constitution and the Second Amendment, it was written to tell the government what they can't do against our ability to own and carry firearms. But yet he's creating an entire amendment which now, limits is... that ability. That's insane to me. Uh, Vince, you're going to get your concealed carry permit back if uh, we have anything to say about it. Vince and Colian, so uh, thank you so much. Hey, Sean. So he was right. Gavin Newsom was not going to be there. Joe Biden's not going to be there to save him. He, his first line of defense is himself. The police can't be there within a matter of seconds unless you're lucky and somebody is close by. But I remember when I was younger, much younger, back in middle school, and I asked my mom, I said, are we going to, well, I mentioned about having a gun. I said, wait, we should get a gun to protect our house. It was my mom and my, my two brothers, and my mom said, no, we don't need a gun. We, need, we have our minds, our brains, to call the cops. And I should have known back then uh, that I was a conservative, <laughs> but I didn't think about politics, but, you know, but signs started, um, certain things happened, led up to this point now. But anyway, uh, I just thought it only made sense for us to have a gun in the home to protect ourselves because the cops can't be there when something goes wrong. They can't be there in a matter of five seconds. So I have firearms now that I am on my own and I'm married. And I just think it's necessary to protect yourself. But it's unfortunate this guy is going through this. That's why I'm glad I live in the state of Texas. Because this these kind of things will not happen as long as we continue to elect leaders who respect the Second Amendment and make it a, a, a pro-gun state for law-abiding citizens. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Thank you. Take care.